Congress appears to be on the verge of passing legislation that would raise funding for mathematics and science education. Supporters said that funding would keep the United States competitive within the global marketplace and American jobs from being shipped overseas. Bill Tucker reports now on what this new legislation could mean for American students and workers. Members of the House and Senate believe America needs to be more competitive. A bill that they believe will do that is likely to pass Congress before the week's end. The reason? Well, the needs to keep our jobs. I mean, if we really want to think of the way to keep our jobs from going to China and, and India and other countries overseas, we need to keep our brain power advantage. The competitiveness bill would nearly double the funding for the National Science Foundation and authorize $43 billion for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics research and education programs at the federal level for the next three years. It creates grant programs for low- and middle-income students. And while putting more money into education and national research labs is welcome, critics point out two problems. First, the problem is a presumed lack of kids with degrees in the Fields. The problem isn't uh, the uh, supply, it's the demand that we have enough engineers and scientists. The problem is that the salaries aren't there. And that's the second problem. The salaries don't reflect a shortage. And the bill doesn't fix the underlying fundamental policy problem where it's cheaper for companies to outsource the jobs overseas. In February of last year, the head of the Federal Reserve testified. Simply producing more engineers and scientists may not be the answer because the labor market for those workers will simply be reflect will simply reflect lower wages or perhaps greater unemployment for those uh, for those workers if you don't have the jobs here because the industries aren't here because they've been sent overseas by our outsourcing focused trade policies it doesn't matter how highly skilled our workers are they'll still be unemployed not a single labor organization or leader who represents american workers was a part of the process of forming this legislation now, there's no question this bill will create jobs at research institutions and on university campuses. The bigger question is, will corporations react by investing more in its U.S. workforces instead of doing as IBM is doing, for example, Lou, and that is outsourcing its work to India? Uh, IBM and uh, hundreds of other hundreds corporations. Of other, right, exactly. You know, I, I love to see the, the enthusiasm for this legislation based on It'll make it more the make America more competitive. It will uh, uh, will have a better educated workforce. Uh, what happened in this country to the idea of education for its own sake, uh, with the millions and millions of brilliant students, bright people we mm -hmm. have in this country, who don't have the opportunity to go to school? Why not make certain that those students who have an aptitude and a talent, a gift in mathematics and science, are guaranteed their education? Uh, by the federal government, whether it be through state programs, uh, grants to state programs, whatever. Uh, the idea of this government reinforcing for the sake of just educating our people, not because of global competitiveness or all this nonsense and to listen to Ben Bernanke, the Federal Reserve Chairman. I mean, that's scurrilous and disgusting, the words that he uttered there. But he does make a point. You can... You've got to create jobs for these people so that when they come out, Vivek Wadra, for example, says 40% of the engineers at Duke end up not going into engineering because the salaries aren't there when they graduate. They go the into investment aren't there banking. because of public policy right. and business corporate practice that is devastating. I wish I'd have written a book about that in 2004. All right, Bill Tucker, thank you very much. I'm joined now by the chairman of the House uh, Committee on Science and Technology, Congressman Mark Gordon. Congressman Gordon, joining us tonight from Capitol Hill. Gordon, good to have you with us, Congressman. Thank you, Lou. Uh, the idea uh, that uh, this government would get behind a program to incentivize, to support science uh, in mathematics and engineering uh, is uh, exciting. What, what, how do you respond to the claim, though, that even this legislation would not be supportive of uh, American jobs and higher pay uh, in the private uh, marketplace of jobs, which is where most folks live? Well, I think it's a misunderstanding to think that this bill is only for uh, producing a few great scientists or engineers. It's much broader than that. If you look at the problem that we have in this country, there are about 7 billion people in the world, half of which make less than $2 a day.
we can't compete and we don't want to compete in that level which means that we've got to be making 50 widgets for every one widget they're making in China uh, we've got to be innovating and developing the widget maker and manufacturing that widget maker here so whether you are a high school graduate whether you are a junior college graduate or a college graduate no matter what it is you're going to have to work at a higher skill level you're going to have to have a better proficiency in math and science so that we can uh, be more efficient and more productive. And that's what we're trying to do in addition to um, investing in research so that we are in, in, in the lead in those areas. Uh, the National Academies issued a report in 2005 that two-thirds of all fourth and eighth graders in this country are testing below the proficient level in mathematics. Uh, will your legislation move to that level of uh, education? Absolutely. Uh, it's K to 12. And the problem, Lou, is it's not that our kids aren't smart, uh, but when you look at scores around the world, yeah. uh, only Cyprus and South Africa have lower math and science scores than our kids. Yeah. The reason is uh, that, and again, we have good teachers, but our teachers aren't proficient in their oh, material. Uh, Congressman, if I may interrupt you. Look, yes. We've got some wonderful teachers, but we, we've got to acknowledge some realities. Uh, we, we have teachers who don't even, who have not, uh, that's not their, the subjects they're teaching wasn't their major. Well, well, that, that's yeah. the reality, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right now, there's something like 67% of the middle school uh, math teachers don't have a certificate or uh, a major in that area. 87% of, uh, of the science teachers. And we're going to do something about that. We're going to do two things. One, we're going to bring those teachers in for the summer, provide them stipends uh, to get their certification, AP courses, whatever might be necessary. We're going to set up a scholarship program for those students that want to go into math, science, and education and agree to teach for five years. So it's really focused on getting the teachers up to right. teach and inspire. Well, I'm inspired that we're, uh, <laughs> we have you thinking about this and your colleagues to move it forward, but certainly something the country needs, a focus, an incentive, uh, and inspiration for our young people, and to make certain that every kid in this country, right. irrespective of his or her economic or so social circumstance, can get an education, certainly in mathematics, uh, engineering, uh, and science. Uh, and if my we hat's don't, off to you. If we don't do that, I'm very afraid that my daughter and this next generation yeah. could be the first generations of Americans that inherit a national standard of living less than their parents. Well, uh, you know, as you were saying, it isn't that our students are s dumb, but man, have we got some dumb people leading this country to get us in this kind of mess. And I'm talking about, not, I'm not talking about simply politicians. I'm talking about the business leaders who talk out of one side of their mouth about education and then do nothing to improve those, the, the opportunities for education for all Americans. We thank you for doing so. Good to have you, you with us. Congressman Curtin's got to get off to a vote. We appreciate your time.